Welcome to the Naughty Child Podcast with me, Richard. And me, Polly. And me, Lily. I'm the dad. And I'm the daughter. And I'm the Australian. Except you're British, aren't you? I do everything before I leave. I need to find that bag on my way. Alex Hartley took us off air in Brighton earlier this year. I'm a huge fan of Pepper. We thought we were really funny, so why doesn't everyone else think we're really funny? <laughs> it's been the longest year ever, hasn't it? She's the most relaxed captain you've ever known. You got me through my flight from Mackay to Adelaide, so thank you very much. Well, my dog is now called Judy Anderson. Oh, well, Manchester Originals aren't through to the Eliminators, so I've got Jane Custine. Yeah. Sophie Eccleston's the worst. It's like having a child with you when she's on tour. I don't know whether it shows something about me or whether it just shows I'm a little bit stupid. We have two guests today. We have two guests. Um, we have someone who is physically with us. Um, and then we have, obviously, a cricketer to chat to. Um, so welcome, Lily, to the podcast. For not the first time, but the first time in person. Yeah, thank you. It's very, very exciting to be here. So many of you remember that in the winter, Lily was our Washes correspondent. She's based in Adelaide. But she has crazily <laughs> come over to England for a week from Australia to come and see the 100. It's a good job it didn't rain. Oh, we got very lucky with the weather, to be fair, because uh, we are talking before um, you came over about, you know, what, what if it rains? Like, we can hope we hope we, 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 we at least see one game. Um, but no, we've been incredibly lucky with the weather and incredibly lucky with, with the cricket we've had. So why don't we talk through the games that um, you've been mm-hmm. to see here, Lily? Because I think um, you've seen four games, am I right? Yeah, four games um, of the women's ones. And then, you know, mm-hmm. if you include the snippets of the men's <laughs> ones that we've seen, then, mm-hmm. then them as well. But yeah, it's been a, it's been pretty crazy. We're a bit exhausted. Yeah, <laughs> it's four cities, four grounds in four days. So um, we started here in Birmingham, didn't we, on, on Sunday. Sunday? Yeah, so that was Birmingham Phoenix against Manchester Originals. Um, so yeah, it was, it was good. We saw Manchester win, um, mm-hmm. which obviously as Manchester fans, we wanted to see. Um, and you got to give a special something to a certain Kate Cross. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's it's quite over social media, yeah. so a lot of people have seen it. But uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, well travelled Australian snacks that yeah took up quite a, a lot of kilos in my bag. But I'm very glad I was able to bring them over and give them to her. Um, so yeah, that was really nice. So but, so what were the snacks then? Uh, so loads of different kinds of Tim Tams, uh, fruit chocs, which are, I love. But they're South Australian, can't find them anywhere else. Um, some shapes, uh, Cadbury chocolate bars that are Australians, um, Australian animals. I think that's it. Yeah. You didn't get a Vegemite? No, I didn't get a Vegemite. Oh, no. no. So Lily made a box for us, which had all those things in <laughs> and had Vegemite. Yeah. Yeah. Which I spat out. It was disgusting. <laughs> I had it on a tiny like corner of my toast and I was like, this is awful. Oh, I've been enjoying them. And half the, half the jar's gone. Yeah, I was going to say, you're the only person who's yeah. eating it. <laughs> eating it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan. Um, I am a massive fan of Tim Tams, so I think they are excellent. Mm, um, I have to agree so, with you. Yes. Yeah. Yes, very good. So, so that game, as well as hanging out with celebrities, which tend to do wherever you go <laughs> it was interesting because Birmingham had two games left and they just needed to win one of them yeah. so this was the first one against Manchester and uh, they failed to pull it out of the bag quite spectacularly yeah and it, it's one of those things where that you know they had such a good start to the tournament and that's kind of the opposite of what they had last year yeah. um, and so you thought okay they're all set for the eliminator um, and they were quite fortunate in the tournament that they didn't have to play Southern Brave because they're only playing six teams rather than seven this year because of Commonwealth Games. Um, so you thought kind of everything was going for them. Um, and then they lost the game to Manchester. And as soon as that happened, they kind of lost a bit of momentum. I think we need to talk about Izzy. Yeah. She's not had a great tournament. A friend of the pod, Izzy Wong. We love you, Izzy. I know you listen to us every week. But um, the 100 has not been a good tournament mm. for her. I, I just, I, what I was anticipating is that this would be a culmination of the last 12 months mm. and she would be one of the big superstars yeah. of the 100. But her bowling has been 
wayward, I think. Yeah. Lots of wides, lots yeah. of boundaries, not too many wickets. And then when she has got to bat, we haven't seen that explosive yeah. batting we were seeing earlier in yeah. the season. I mean, I think part of it is actually how busy her schedule's been. Because so this is the first year she, she's played for England, making all of her debuts, kind of been thrown in at the deep end, then doing Commonwealth Games, then going straight into 100. I think that's something I've kind of noticed with the girls that have played in the Commonwealth Games, that actually it's been kind of difficult for them coming into the 100. Um, I think probably the exception being Alice Capsey, but I don't, like, you know, she's never, <laughs> you know, she's always kind of on the top of the game. But um, you think about Nat Siver, um, kind of struggling for form after Commonwealth Games, and it's, um, I don't know, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's hard to see, but um, it, it happens to every player, so it's just kind yeah. of a natural, natural Although some happen. non-English players played in the Commonwealth Games and did quite well in the 100. Yeah, let's not even talk about Susie that. Bates. Oh, Susie Bates. <laughs> it's just incredible. Um, but, yeah. Um, then the second game we went to on Monday was at Trent Bridge, uh, Trent Rockets versus Welsh Fire. Yes, I know. I didn't go to this one, so you no. have to fill me in. Yeah, so it, it was a really good game. Um, Nottingham is a bit of an underwhelming place. <laughs> we were, we were, as we got off the train, mm. we were looking and it was a bit windy and a bit cloudy. <laughs> and we are like, are we even going to get a game in here? Yeah, it was looking um, it was like it was going to rain. Yeah. Um, but... but no, it was really good. We were sat with all the Welsh Fire families, um, which as people who were supporting Trent probably wasn't the best thing. Uh, but no, that, that was quite good. Um, and yeah, a really good performance by Trent. And um, I just felt, obviously, at this point, they didn't know if they had qualified. But I just thought, if they can play like this against Oval or Southern, which obviously they have to face Southern now, um, it's, you know, there were good signs, I suppose. Um, and yeah, I just, I just thought they played really well. It was great to see Mignon Dupri get some runs as well. Yeah, she's had a difficult tournament, but the, yeah, but now it's being extended, mm. and you just think actually she could then go on and play like that in the eliminator and then exactly. the final. And yeah, and and it was it was their first time. I think they actually bowled um, Georgia Davis and actually used her as a bowler, um, which she obviously is. Um, so that was really really good to see. But um, no, that was a really good day as well. Mm. Um, I think Georgia Davis, I might be wrong, but I think she also got play of the day. Yeah, she did. Yeah. She had that amazing run out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, that, that was, was really good. Good um, little impact to have. In yeah, the first exactly. Game, but... And Elise Villani batted really well. Um, and obviously captain that side as well. So I thought that yeah. was really good. And Lily, you came back from that game with a Welsh fire hat. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, one of the visors given to given to me by um, Alex Hartley, which was pretty cool. It was um, a very nice little little gift mm -hmm. for, for traveling over but yeah well i wouldn't get too carried away with that i think i'd imagine the uh, welsh fire merchandise store was quite a lot of unused uh, stock there to get rid of probably had a lot of, yeah a lot of vices yeah there, but yeah that's you, you, you did look like a welsh fire fan on the way back i was like i did get a couple of funny looks yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> from the ecb man on the train he was yeah. heading two hours with that was okay a um, sure. yeah and then we headed to lords on tuesday you are so lucky a day yeah. out at Lords is just one of my favourite things in the world. Yeah, no, it was it was incredible because Lily's first time at Lords. Um, I've been to Lords a couple of times, but this is my first first time seeing a regional game or I say regional, like a hundred game, a non international game um, at Lords. And I think coming away from the the day, it was mixed emotions really because we had this feeling after the game, we feel really sad, but we're at Lords, so we can't kind of have that sadness. Um, so remind us who was playing then. Yeah, so it was uh, Phoenix against London Spirit, and obviously Phoenix had to win this game to go through to the Eliminator. And but that's fine because they're playing London Spirit. Exactly, People London Spirit no haven't hopeless. done well. Yeah, um, and it was an extremely low-scoring game, but a proper thriller that went down to the last five balls. Um, and I don't want to say it, but the Aussies for Phoenix lost it, lost it for them. Um, and yeah, it was gutting. Yeah, it was really intense. Like, mm. you know, at all the other games we've been to, there was nothing quite like it. And mm. nothing at any WBBL games mm. that I've ever witnessed. It was every, like, most of the people were London Spirit mm. fans, but there were a couple of, I think it must have been families. Yeah. In there. Um, so it was quite split, but it was, the chants were going, yeah. everyone was cheering for Phoenix, everyone was like, no, Spirit. And it was mm. really, 
really nerve wracking sitting yeah. there and like the crowd really, really soaked me up. The atmosphere, they loved it. It was such a good crowd for, and I guess it, it was better for the day because, you know, yeah. Spirit home game, big crowd for Spirit. It was mm-hmm. probably worked out better that way, but. So the final over went to Sophie Molyneux, didn't it? Yeah. But the penultimate over went to Emily Arnott. <sighs> And I think we need to talk about it. We need to give her like a moment because she has played so well in the 100 this year. And we mentioned before about Izzy Wong not having a great tournament, but Emily Arliss, on the other Mm. hand, has really shone, I think. And it's, you know, I think if I were England selector, Mm. I would be seriously considering Emily Arliss at the moment. Yeah, because, I mean, she has been in kind of wider squads before, but um, obviously never been called up. Um, but no, she just bowled so well. And I think after her first 10 balls, she hadn't gone from out for any runs. I think it was even 15. I think it was uh, 15, 15, she had she gone for two, for two wickets. Yeah. yeah, two wickets, no she runs. Was, yeah. And we were saying, we were like, should she just not bowl that last yeah, set just, five? Because figures, imagine walking away with figures of none for two. Was, I think she would have preferred yeah. to keep yeah. it that way. But yeah, yeah, that was really good. Oh, yeah. it's two for none though. If you yeah, oh, the Australians, the Australians, they're just so wrong way around, aren't they? Yeah. You're oh. out of order. <laughs> um, but no, she played really well. And it, it was one of those where obviously Phoenix hadn't kind of deserved to win because of their performance with the bat. But at the same time, they pulled it back and then the spirit didn't really deserve to win with the bat either. So it was, yeah, it was one of those interesting ones. So the final over, you bring on the, the Australians, they're, mm. they're proper professionals, aren't yeah. they? They know what they know to what do. do. And so Sophie Molyneux, done really well in the tournament, really economical, comes on, bowls the final ball, the 96th ball of the Mm. innings. It's a no ball. Well, it's a chest high beamer, no ball. They get hits for two. Mm -hmm. And so suddenly instead of needing 11 or five balls, they now need seven or five five, balls. Yeah. And then Elise Perry misfielded a ball. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was the same one. It yeah, was the same, the same one. one, yeah. And, oh, yeah. It was a bit, it's a bit hard to defend these Australian players. When <laughs> we've got the mat, there was a man sitting behind us with a really young boy explaining mm. cricket to him. Yeah. And uh, when Elise Perry was on the boundary, he said, um, that's Elise Perry, arguably, you know, the, the, best, best, astro- the best female cricketer mm. in the world to ever, <laughs> ever play the game. And then this feels that. And yeah. I'm like, look. Sorry, Perry, but there's, there's not much I can do to, to, no. to defend you here. I try, I'm trying. Yeah. But it's pressure as well, isn't mm. it? And, you know, uh, we've got a guest on later who talks about what it feels like mm. when you play a Lord for the first time. Yeah. And, and she had to bowl the first over yeah. of the game. And she was absolutely petrified. Yeah. <laughs> and, mm. and actually, you can be as experienced as you like, but you, put, you get put in those situations and pressure yeah. takes its toll, I think. Yeah. Lily, what do you think of Lords as like a whole as an experience? I loved it, and they're all padded seats as well, yeah. which was oh, really so nice. nice. <laughs> really yeah, comfy, like proper, proper seats. Um, felt very fancy sitting there in in the seats, but no, it was really nice. It's, it was a nice warm day. It was mm. just beautiful to look around. Like everywhere you looked, it was just beautiful. Mm. Um, as well as it obviously being a you know a very close cricket match, mm. it was the place itself is yeah sunny and I'd really like to go again, yeah. but don't know when that will be. Uh, but yeah, it was really really nice. Mm. Yeah, and of course um, the Rachel Hay event gate has just opened, so we saw that on the way. In fact, we walked out of it um, and then we saw the kind of plaque and the just mm. actually by it, which yeah. It was pretty cool because um, I did see something on Twitter of someone asking where the gate was and someone saying, oh, you mean the North Gate or whatever. And they're like, oh, no, it's not. Uh, I think Lords actually apologised for that because they were like... Mm. Um, but no, it was just kind of special to to see her recognised in that way. Mm. Um, and obviously, yeah, it's such an iconic place and the place she she fought to play at. So um, Yes, yes, yeah. the, the, the troublemaker is actually <laughs> then honoured by the yeah. place where she caused all yeah. the trouble. Um, but no, it's cool that then the Rachel Hayer Flint final is, is happening next month. Though. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that was really special. Um, and then Wednesday, the final game, we went to Old Trafford. Yes. For Manchester. So yeah, just a minute. So you, you were, so a game in Birmingham. And yeah. then the next day you're in Nottingham. The next yeah. day you're in London. And the next day you're in Manchester. Manchester. Yeah. 
Okay. Just, you know, living off the adrenaline. <laughs> I think that flight from Australia now just seems quite easy compared to uh, <laughs> travelling around the motorway network of Britain. Yeah. yeah. So, Oval against Bulls versus Manchester Originals. If Oval won, they go straight to, through to the final. If Manchester win, they could potentially qualify for the Eliminator. But there were some crazy maths things that had to had to go into Manchester winning and obviously they, they didn't do it. Yes, they had to win within 73 balls, I think. Mm-hmm. So they, I think they put Oval into that, which would make yeah. sense. So they knew what yeah, they were so chasing. chasing yeah. But what they ended up chasing was the highest total set in the yeah. competition this year. So uh, to get it in 100 was going to be mm. highly unlikely. To get it in 73 70s. was impossible. Yeah. Um, but a bit of a moment of fame for you, Lily. <laughs> yeah. Um... If anyone was watching the throw, no, you were, because <laughs> <laughs> it was really bad. But, um, yeah, nice little shout-out by Alex Harley, mm-hmm. which was nice. Um, but, yeah, I was able to touch the, the game, the game yeah, board. So cool, that, I guess. Um, yeah, Lauren Winfield Hill hit a six off the bonnie of Crossy, actually, yeah. um, into the stand. It was right next. I mean, I was good. You didn't go for the catch, but I, I, I would have scraped my side all down the metal <laughs> yeah but it would have been stand. worth it um but then yeah you picked up and threw it back and i don't know how alex harley like rec- like saw straight away that it was you yeah. um but no that was that was quite funny uh, yeah scott yeah so alex there. hartley said on live on bbc2 yeah that, on the telly that that's the girl that brought all the snacks for for, for crossy in the yeah. game the other day as my cap was covering my face so yeah it was um yeah, yeah pretty good spotting oh, but We've got to talk about um, match tax, right? Because we don't have to talk about it. No, no, we do because we have to mention it. So, on when we were in Manchester, mm. you were saying, Oh, I really want to go get some of the 100 cards. I was like, oh, Okay, fair enough. Yeah, we'll go to Jabir Smith. I wasn't that enthused by the idea. And you're like, Oh, you should get some, which is probably the most dangerous sentence you've ever said. <laughs> because then I bought two packs and we found a nice bench in Manchester in Shamble Square. We sat down, we opened our things. And I got a gold limited edition cake cross card. I was like, oh, it's amazing. And you got like a normal, normal cake cross. cross. Yeah. So then at the game, Crossy knew we were coming to this game. So we went down to see her and we were chatting and everything. And we were like, we've got these cards. And I've never in my life, I've never <laughs> asked for a photo and I've never asked someone to sign something. But I was like, I have to get this so signed. Because I was like, this yeah. is so funny just before a game. So we got Crossy to sign that. And then mm. you ended up getting your old, uh, your own um, gold limited edition, but massive size. Yeah. From the Manchester Originals like admin person. Yeah, it was um because he obviously was chatting to me when I had the mm. box for Crossy at Edgebaston, and he because rec- I was gonna ask mm. for the clip that they filmed it, and um he recognised me and he was like, oh hey, how are you going? And I was like, yeah, good. And he's like, I've got something for you. Right there. So he disappeared for like 15 yeah. minutes and came back with this and he's like, Do you want it? And I was like, sure. <laughs> yeah, and then Crossy signed it. It's was, massive. It's How big so would you say it is? Like it's probably like A3 size. Mm. Yeah. It's yeah, it's pretty big. So A3 size match attacks card of yeah. Kate Cross, signed by Kate Cross. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. Um and then since we've been on a bit of a match attacks I've range, got you a bit obsessed, I think. Yeah, it's really not good because like Oh yeah, they I mean they're not too expensive, but it's mm, it's not good because you when you're you like oh I, yeah, yeah and you're like oh I need to collect so and so I need to collect so and so. You're not a wealthy person, Paul. <laughs> yeah, I'm aware. I'm we, very aware. We, we sat for what probably about like an hour just yeah. sorting through, and we haven't even finished. We still need to swapping the cards yeah. and checking them off our yeah. checklist. We still need to keep an addiction. Doing that. Yeah. But anyway, originals versus oval. Um, what even happened? Well, <laughs> yes. remember, yeah, originals, originals lost. lost. Oval hit 164. Oh, yeah, Susie Bates played really well. Yeah, um, yeah Sphere Smell bowled really well again. That was great to see oh, Sphere Smell play. I'm so annoyed that she didn't get out Liz Lee because they, they, um, straight away Liz Lee appealed. Um, oh, yeah, and then she actually did get a bit of an inside edge draw. Um, but no, I thought she bowled really well. Um, I know, I just thought it was, I mean, it was a decent game of cricket. But it was good to see Amy Campbell getting runs. Amy. <laughs> oh, no. Friend of the pod, Amy Campbell. We watched her on the TV oh against um, Northern Superchargers mm-hmm. get the most ridiculous dismissal ever. So um, 
just wandering mm. out of her crease and the ball whizzed into Alyssa Healy who takes the, the bails off and yeah. and and uh, Amy Campbell has no idea what's even happened. Mm. And suddenly No one knows really what's happening, <laughs> other than kind of Northern Superchargers, who it feels like they've planned this a little bit. And then at Edgebaston three days later, oh. exactly the same thing happens. It was... We couldn't believe it. No. We were sitting there going, it's just happened again. It was like, no. Um, but but then, she, then she second top scored. Yeah. So original. she somehow kept a place in the side. <laughs> and made up for it and yeah. yeah it was a really good innings by mm-hmm. Amy so well done Amy and we were just we're rooting Round for you well yeah. and um Daisy Mullen Daisy came Mullen in for, yeah for originals yeah so that was an interesting one actually I think that's something originals kind of did slightly wrong so um Grace Potch, Potts obviously fast bowler um was out with injury um do you know what this quite happened but she's out um but they have replaced they replaced her with daisy mullen who is a batter he plays for thunder this is this is like her first call up into um into the hundred and normally is a great batter i mean she did get run out but they needed better bowlers their bowling was sloppy and i was just thinking you've got laura jackson in the side who is a like for like with grace potts why do you bring her in because yeah. she could have at least attempted to do that job. There, yeah, I mean, lots of questions like that, I think, with regional players who didn't get yeah. a, a shout. Uh, Georgie mm. Boyce, as yeah. well, for the originals, didn't yeah. play any games. And it's not like the originals were piling on the runs. Exactly. Um, Stair Callis mm. uh, for Birmingham Phoenix. Yeah. And I guess the, the question is that when a side is losing, Mm. and you don't make any changes. But, but what do you expect to happen sort of thing? Yeah. You're just waiting for it to go right. Because there are only a certain amount of games you can wait for that to happen, like for things to change. Um, otherwise, you just kind of knock yourself out of the competition. Yeah, and maybe if it were an eight-game tournament yeah. like before, there'd be more scope for that. Mm. You know, so maybe some teams would have, you, you know, you'd have maybe a couple of dead rubbers at the end where you could yeah. switch things up a bit. Or... Mm-hmm. Um, it, You'd want to change things around within an eight-game yeah. tournament, but a six-game tournament, maybe not. Mm. But yeah, I did feel quite sorry for players like that who, yeah. who I felt deserved to be given a chance, mm. but ended up being overlooked. Yeah, and there are so many like you know could keep on naming them some really good players on the bench. You think about like Tara Norris, mm-hmm. um, who I don't even know if she got a game, um, and players like that. I just didn't quite understand why they were being left out of the squads, but. Yeah. Anyway, we know now who's in the mm-hmm. eliminator and who's yeah. in the final. Yes, yeah, so we've got Southern Brave against Trent Rockets uh, at the Aegeus, which I'm not very happy that it's the Aegeus because <laughs> it's like the Southern Brave crowd are immense. And do you know what I thought? I'm not very happy about this, and this is very Southern Brave, that in their last um, game, like their last home game, home... Mm, they did this big thing of it's our last ever home game round of applause with the idea that they're going to go straight to the final they're not going to have to go back to the Aegeus but now they're back um so not happy about that but I have a feeling about Trent Rockets because it's kind of caught them off guard that they're in this moment later they had to wait 24 hours to find out or 48 hours to find out if they were going to be in the eliminator or not and they probably weren't expecting to be. And also, going into the tournament, it would have been embarrassing, I think, if Oval or Southern hadn't made it for, uh, made it through. Especially, obviously, Oval being defending champions and then just Southern Brave with kind of the, I suppose, what people think of them. Um, but I think Southern, um, but Trent are kind of underdogs and their intention, obviously, is to do well in the tournament. But I don't think they necessarily would have had the same sort of eye on the trophy as other teams might have had. Well, lots of parallels to last year, really, aren't yeah. there, with Birmingham Phoenix, who again had to go and play Oval Invincibles at the Oval mm, in the Eliminator. Yeah. Uh, so now Trent are going to Aegeus, home of Southern Brave, mm. to play Southern Brave. You, I'd still fancy Southern Brave. Yeah, but they did have a big collapse against Northern Superchargers. But uh, <laughs> I thought it was interesting because whenever every other team's had a big collapse, they've been bowled out for under 100. But... So the road didn't even get bowled out, and it was for more than a hundred. It was like they got one hundred twenty or something. I was like, oh, okay. So the Braves are just a different, different gravy. So we'll see what happens with that, and then over the Invincibles waiting to defend their title mm-hmm. on Saturday at Lords. Yeah. Who's everyone going for? 
Who do you want to win? Aunt Trent. I, I like an understory. I mean, I do love Oval Invincibles as a team, but I just think I do. I, you know, yeah, I think I'm hoping Trent. I want Oval. Yeah. I want to see. Space. I just want, yeah, I want to be a snail to lift the trophy. With a yeah. grand up there. Oh, Do don't you make me cry. No, I, I would love that. Because I think also, yeah, that's a team that have got a couple of young players. And most of the teams haven't played their young players. Mm. So you think about Alexa Stonehouse, Emma Marlowe for Trent Rockets haven't been played. Davina Perrin hasn't been played for Phoenix. But actually, Oval have used Alice Capstone's fierce mouth. I thought it was really, really yeah, Alice Capstone doesn't count. Yeah, she's not really. She is a young player, but she's not count anymore. England, um, England player. So, yeah, I think just anyone but Southern Brave. Um, you get the same as that's, ever. Then. That's always my attitude. But <laughs> I just don't want Southern Brave to lift the trophy. Um, I think Oval have kind of deserved it. I think mm. the most in terms of how they've played, um, and I think especially with. Kind of the mix-up of captaincy, of that changing, I think they've coped well with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, Southern Brave beat Oval last time they faced each other, so we'll see. Well, we'll see, and I guess next week we'll talk about what That's happened all. and and and, mm-hmm. and pick over that a little bit. Do you think it's time to introduce our second guest? Yeah, so um, earlier last week we spoke to London Spirit player Grace Ballinger, who had just made her debut at Lord's. It was really interesting to hear mm. from her and what it's like to be part of that hundred yeah. setup and, and to open the bowling on your debut at Lords. Um, incredible! Mm. Um, so enjoy our chat with Grace Ballinger. What is your cricket story and how did you first get involved with cricket? Um, it's actually started off in Warmley, to be honest. Uh, my dad was quite—he was a keen footballer, keen, keen cricketer, and he kind of. I spent a lot of time with him growing up. I was quite a tomboy, born into different sports and probably from that really and had an older brother as many, many people coming into like cricket, I found out did and just, yeah, kind of just playing with the boys, being around with the boys. And then obviously as women's cricket started to become a bit bigger, joined the local women's team and just went from there really. And how did you kind of get into the pathway of obviously playing like county stuff growing up, but then obviously ending up uh, with Lightning and in a more professional setup? Yeah, so I was really fortunate in the sense that I was put into the pathway at Warwickshire at quite a young age. And Warwickshire, I was there for probably about 10 to 12 years and it was just a fantastic environment. They they really set me up well um, going forward and then obviously ended up going to university at Loughborough and moving to Lightning. So went through the age groups programme and then into the academy and EPP, which is mixed at Warwickshire, which again, I think was really quite pivotal in my development. And I've got a lot to thank from them, I think, but... Yeah, then moved to Lightning for the first year of the the change of setup from the KSL. So I would have been 18, I think it's two summers ago. So I guess choosing to go to Loughborough University was a kind of strategic move as, as well, I guess, on your part. Yeah, definitely. I, I spent a year in the um, England training squad, which was based at Loughborough, just before I went to university and before COVID. Um, and that was part of the decision making. But then Obviously, that's when everything started to change and the regional stuff came into play. And then I had a choice between Central Sparks, which was obviously the Warwickshire based, if you will, and Lightning. So it wasn't an easy decision at all, but logistically and what Lightning offered me was kind of just, I think, a bit better for me going forward and kind of just stayed there since. Um, kind of what's your experience been like of, you know, kind of almost being a student athlete? Obviously, Lightning's very much based at Loughborough Uni. Um, so what's it been like to kind of balance the two? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it can be pretty tough at times. I think sometimes cricket takes the forefront and studies maybe get neglected slightly. But I think Loughborough is probably the best place to be at for that sort of thing. And they've really helped me. So they gave me a performance lifestyle mentor which was really useful and I'm going into my third year now and they've like allowed me to split my third year over two years um, because of cricket, which I think Loughborough is the only university to offer that. So obviously really helpful it means I can devote a bit more time to my cricket and still be able to attend my classes and stuff. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So I guess it just, it takes, Theoretically, it takes the pressure off a bit. I don't, in that situation, what I do is the first year I wouldn't work at all, particularly, and then I'd go absolutely <laughs> crazy the second year. Well, the way that it works is that obviously you do 120 credits in a year, but they split it so you do 60 in one year and 60 in the other. Mm-hmm. And I think, 
if I remember correctly, correctly, I can weight it so I can do 40 in winter and 20 in summer. So like, that's what I've found most tough is that I took on in my second year, I took on more in winter just to kind of release the pressure in summer. But that meant it was a lot of work in winter. So I'm glad that I won't be having that stress this year. Yeah. And is it right that you study English literature? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So I, I guess at some point there's going to have to be a sort of decision that you make about career going forward and, uh, you know, professional cricket or going into a, another profession, possibly, you know, linked to your English degree and that sort of thing. I think, yeah, I think I'm trying not to think about it too much at the moment. I mean, obviously the dream is just to play cricket full time and just be having a really good time with that. But I like kind of, I'm into like sports journalism and like sports media and stuff. So I've been doing a bit of work with the BBC, which a few of the girls have been doing this year and they've been really good. And it's quite nice to kind of, I've been doing the men's cricket, the county championship and kind of look at the professional game from a slightly different lens and be kind of in the background instead of on the pitch. But no, I'm really enjoying that and just trying to do as much as I can at the moment. I mean, I find that really interesting because of course Polly's, um, 17 at the moment so she's going to be making decisions about future and university and, and that sort of thing in the future um but I I think one of the things I really like about the women's game is that there are lots of players a bit like you who've got a bit more to them than just cricket um uh, you know so are kind of bringing life skills and studies and, and so on into their uh game as well and they've got a sort of broader base of uh, skills and qualifications taking them forward and I guess as a as a parent I kind of see that as quite important <laughs> but I can imagine for some of the youngsters coming through at the moment they just want to play cricket and and perhaps university isn't something that they want to do particularly if a professional contract is going to be thrown at them at the age of 17 or 18. Yeah I think I think I've always, almost come through at a really good time um, in the sense that maybe when I was a little bit younger I'm 20 now maybe when I was 15 16 the I probably didn't think I'd be playing professionally in four or five years. That's just not really the game's progressed so fast. So, so recently that I kind of had to look at other professions and I don't think that's a bad thing. As you say, I think it gives you something to fall back on and you see a lot of, especially the men are a bit to an extent abused by the system. They come through thinking that's all they'll do. And it's so tough, isn't it? And then they get released and haven't got much else to say, but yeah, I think it's been good to kind of, Obviously, it's still integrated into cricket, the stuff that I'm doing and the stuff I want to do, but to just have something else and kind of takes the pressure off my cricket as well to to some extent because it means that I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket, so to speak. Yeah, and like sports media is so interesting. That's kind of what I want to go into. And um, I actually did my commentary debut at the game. You got your Pfeiffer. Um, I think I did a post-match interview with... Uh, with yeah, yeah, no, I remember, yeah. Um, so what was it like getting that Pfeiffer? Because it, it was a... I mean, it was an incredible day of cricket. Like, I all I remember is just that it was like a good contest between the two teams. Obviously, Lightning were were incredible that day. Yeah, thank you. It was um, it was really pleasing actually. Obviously, we haven't had the best of seasons. Um, with Lightning, we're a relatively young side, learning side, so it's definitely going the right way. But yeah, it was just really good to put in an individual performance for myself. I kind of felt as if I'd been bowling well, but hadn't quite quite fired almost. So to then finally kind of just get everything right and yeah, do do pretty well, pick up five wickets was good. And then obviously have that backed up by Catherine. She's got a very impressive turn. And yeah, it was it was a good day all round for us, I think. It was amazing, wasn't it? And and went to the final over as well. So I um in fact I, I couldn't make it to that game because I had COVID. So I had to I had to watch it on YouTube and listen to Polly commentating <laughs> for six and a half hours. But um a, but yeah, it was it was a great game. Went to the final over, and to, as you say, to have those key contributions, to have a five for and a century, you know, f- from your team on the same day is absolutely brilliant, isn't it? You've got, you know, key people standing up and giving those performances just when they were needed. Yeah, it's really good. Obviously, you want everyone in the team to do well, and you want everyone to contribute. And then, I think, like obviously, we've been struggling a bit, and things just haven't been quite clicking. So. It's quite encouraging. Obviously, Thunder, not a bad side by any means. So they had quite strong side out. They had Dot in play. And so it's quite encouraging for us as a side to to see those performances because it's quite frustrating when you you know as a side you can do it, but you just haven't been performing necessarily. And I think everything's going in the right direction and things like that, obviously encouraging and hopefully a bit more common as the years go by. Did you get Dot in out that day? I seem to remember. 
yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> good moments yeah no it's a good day out <laughs> and um obviously the hundreds happening at the moment um what was it like making your debut at lords for london spirit because that's like the dream place to have your debut yeah no it was obviously it was only a couple of days ago so all, pre- all pretty fresh and stuff but yeah it was incredible um we had a pretty st- tough start to the campaign obviously our first three games were all away from home we spent about 12 days on the road and I've never really thought about um home advantage before but that's something that definitely comes into play when you've got crowds in which obviously is the case at the 100 and yeah it was pretty daunting to be honest um I'm not really a nervy cricketer I wouldn't call myself a nervy cricketer and I kind of thought oh I'll be all right it's just just bowling same as always but got given the first five which I was obviously really pleased to be given a good responsibility on debut and was a little bit nervy to be honest um yeah I mean the crowd and the countdown was definitely yeah something to remember but what a place to debut I don't really think there could be a better place to debut and brilliant back there tomorrow London derby so hopefully we'll get another win I mean the contrast is just incredible isn't it so you know it's lovely going to watch you play at lightning but you know Hazel Grave there, there are no stands you, you know you're, you're given a deck chair or you bring your own chair <laughs> you know you get a nice crowd of about 150 maybe but the difference between that and stepping up at Lords in front of I don't know 10 15,000 people it, that's just extraordinary isn't it the contrast between those two experiences essentially doing the same job yeah I think it, it definitely had an impact on me to be honest um as I say I'd never really thought that would bother me but I think quite naturally it did and um Obviously, it was great to get our first win. It was brilliant to be part of the starting eleven for that. But hopefully, the nerves will lessen as I am um, go through. And yeah, I mean, the hundred is just brilliant, isn't it? The amount of publicity it's given the women's game, and to have exposure to that sort of crowd is probably really good for me in the long run. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. Totally, it can it can only make you better, can't it? Because you're putting yourself in really uncomfortable situations in which you just have to cope. And it it means the next time that you do that, hopefully tomorrow it's going to be slightly easier isn't it and then and again putting yourself in a position where uh, you're playing with and against some of the best players in the world as well what's that been like yeah it's been fantastic um obviously got Beth Mooney opening the batting on our side and she's the top run scorer of the tournament and even though I'm not a batter myself it's just fascinating to tap into like the way she goes about it and she's just honestly a different class it's so impressive to see and yeah, it's a funny one, actually, because when I debuted on Wednesday, we were playing Welsh Fire and it was actually Tammy and Sarah Bryce opening the batting. So it was actually two Lightning girls. So I kind of thought, oh, this will be all right. Like I bowl at these in the nets all the time. This will be, this is normal. Like it's OK. That's what I was kind of trying to tell myself. But on the big stage, it was a bit different. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's really good just to be around some of the older girls, some of the more senior players and just tap into that. And have you uh, had much opportunity to have Lord's lunches yet? Because all I hear yeah. is good things. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah it's something I definitely enjoy. I'm a bit of a foodie myself. And yeah, pretty much every training day we have a lunch, which is very enjoyable. Had chicken supreme today, which is pretty nice. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good, to be honest. It's probably one of my highlights. <laughs> Honestly, I think that's like, you know, everyone talks about kind of the, all the different hundred teams the benefits of them you talk about the snacks they're sponsored by but honestly London Spirit kind of just makes its way up the table purely because of Lord's lunches if I it were given a choice be, I, I, if I were given a choice of a contract I'd definitely go for London Spirit yeah, just, just because the of the food and playing <laughs> and Lord's. location it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. yeah it's fantastic and all the staff here are brilliant and at Lord's they're just great um very inclusive and we had Harry Kane at one of our games yeah. see that we had Harry Kane and Chris Hughes off Love Island so it's obviously the cricket's the main part and it's absolutely fantastic I'm loving it but to have those experiences as well round it yeah it's been really good did you um see the I think it was a TikTok or a reel about one of the Lord's lunches there was one posted yesterday oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah well, it was good you're not up to date with social media <laughs> TikTok <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what's the next step for you after the 100's over? So we've got you know another week or so of, of the 100. What happens next? Yeah, I mean, I think we team back up with Lightning. Obviously, three more games left in the Rachel Hayo Flynn. Um, I think I get maybe five days in between just to rest up, probably go back to Birmingham, see the family. Uh, yeah, and then I just want to put in some good performances, finish well in the 50 over comp with Lightning, hopefully get a couple wins and, yeah, just go from there. 
just try and put my name in the hat, do everything I can, win us a couple of games. Yeah, and then new term starts in the end of September, beginning of October, I guess. Yeah, gosh, yeah, back at university, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> yeah, it's, de- it's definitely taken a bit of a back step at the moment, but some shakes, yeah, I, yeah. I did not even think of that, to be honest. Yeah, and you probably need to get a bit of reading on a bit mm. of Shakespeare or something. I've done absolutely no summer reading. That'll be all right. Yeah, it's good. It's good to balance things and, as I say, have something a bit different. But no, yeah, just keep going and do everything I can. Just try and keep busy. Don't yeah, like yeah. having a good time. I had that realisation the other day. I was like, wait, I, I go into year 13 and like on the 7th of September. I was like, oh, I need to, I've got loads of work to do. I was like, I haven't done any reading on this stuff. We've just... been telling you about that work the whole summer though. That's yeah, I know, but I've been busy. <laughs> You'll actually have to sit your A-levels as well, won't you? I didn't yeah, sit mine. No. Yeah, I didn't do mine because of COVID. Awesome. To be fair, I kind of half did GCSE. So I like kind of, Yeah. I, I got that benefit, so. Yeah, you'll have to sit some proper exams at some point, so it might as well be next year. (laughs) (laughs) Well, can we wish you all the best for the the rest of the 100? And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see you playing tomorrow uh, on the TV and then then the rest of the season with Lightning as well. And we'll be watching your Mm -hmm. career very carefully Mm -hmm. because, you know, we've seen you get a five through. We expect more of that, I think, in the... uh, (laughs) (laughs) Hope so. Thank you very much. That was brilliant to hear from Grace. Yeah, no, it was really good. And uh, similar neck of the woods where where you used to live. So yes, quite funny. Yes. Um, yes. Um, we need to um, ask Lily a question here. Okay. Do we? <laughs> so Lily, you're heading back to Australia soon. Yes, uh, Sunday. So yeah, too soon. Short journey, <laughs> short Fantastic. trip. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So, have you enjoyed your time in the UK? Yeah, it's been really nice. Um, obviously, thank you. Let me say, thank you. <laughs> it's been really nice. No problem. Um, okay. You've been no trouble at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's been really amazing to to travel to all the different cricket mm-hmm. grounds. I've managed to check four off my list. And mm-hmm. um, got a couple more to go, which mm-hmm. we're planning on next going year, to next time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been great. And the trains and the buses. Love them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. trains with tables <laughs> trains with tables honestly is something that you know you don't appreciate until you see it it's amazing you don't have to have your food on your lap you can have your food on your on your table welcome mm-hmm. to civilization <laughs> buses with stairs buses with stairs not not a thing it's just one story buses <laughs> and your house actually three stories incredible you make us sound like living in the palace <laughs> <laughs> yeah when you first got here you're like Three oh, stories it, yeah. and the floating garden. You're like, yeah. what on earth? Insane. Yeah. And it's like, I I don't know how you do it. I'd have such bad knees from just walking it's up and just... downstairs all day. See, this is what I've noticed. You're so bad going upstairs. Really? Like, I can't walk, walk down. I'm walking it's like a little so penguin. funny. They're like, we'll be walking upstairs, <laughs> and I get to the top, and Lily's just like, wait. So at St John's Wood tube station, I was like, because it was a massive queue for the escalator. I was like, oh, I'm going upstairs. Straight for the escalator. I was like, no. I'd rather queue than walk upstairs. To be fair, that was a calf burner. That was. So Australia is the land of bungalows, then. Yeah, yeah apparently so. We just don't have many stairs. It's That's so strange. Well, everything's just like flat land. We don't yeah. need stairs really. We don't have underground tubes. Like you don't need yeah. stairs. It's just we rarely have yeah. stairs. Very bizarre. No tables on trains. No stairs. No double decker buses. Anywhere. No double decker. So it feels like one what of those questions place? where it's like more wheels or more stairs. Oh yeah, more stairs. <laughs> it's <laughs> definitely been more wheels. Yeah. In Australia, yeah. yeah, it's like actually just thinking about it, like I, we rarely have stairs, especially in houses. Like yeah. the amount of two-story houses just really don't exist. Mm. So yeah, wow. that's really weird. interesting. Fun fact for your night. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, and um, WBBL that must start actually quite soon. Yeah, so uh, we've got WNCL first, which starts this month, September, later this month. So all the players have started pre-season and getting ready to start the season now. And then that kind of feeds into the WBBL and then uh, finishes off in March season. So it's kind of like the Rachel Hale Flint mm. Trophy in the 100, really. They mm. stop and then re- um, resume. Mm. But yeah, it's really exciting. There's lots of signings. Mm. Izzy Wong. Yeah. Um, Danny Wyatt. Danny Wyatt. Uh, Shabham Ismail. Yeah. 
lots of international yeah, players. We'll be trying, trying to guess today. Yeah, we're trying to guess signing. Signing. Emily Arlett, I was we're thinking, fingers crossed. Yeah. But yeah. That'd be great. So so maybe we could catch up with you during the WBL series and you could give us a few reports on. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Any time. Yeah. I'll be there for most of them. <laughs> Probably planning interstate trips soon. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll oh, definitely wow. be there and can definitely keep yeah. you updated. Yeah. And uh, if people want to mm -hmm. follow us and like us and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so uh, you can find us on Instagram, which is North Child Podcast, and Twitter, which is OO Child Podcast. Um, and yeah, you can follow us on whichever platform you're listening to us. Um, so you can listen to us again if you want. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back next week, probably with a guest, um, kind of summing up the 100. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm.